Hi there, we're going to be talking today about the military section that we're working on in Conflict 707, Gender and Violence. Today we're going to be talking about aggression, militarism, and masculinity, specifically how participation in the military offers a vehicle for men, especially socialized, uh, socially marginalized men, to gain social power and legitimacy. So we're going to start off just by looking at an image of Rambo. This is kind of valorized masculinity in its most um, distilled form, the, the highest um, embodiment of what we think of as masculinity. We have rippling muscles and a gun, um, and Rambo really performing as the archetype of masculinity. So we're just going to go through um, some slides and talk a little bit about the readings that we had this week and specifically the relationship to masculinity and power. So we're especially going to be focusing on the ways in which masculinity um, is embodied and achieved through participation in the military and how this um, bestows social power on those participating in the military. We're going to be drawing a lot from our readings um, by Leslie Gill, The Creating Citizens, Making Men, Military and Masculinity in Bolivia, and then from Jess Goodell's book, Shaded Black, Death and After in Iraq. So the first thing I want to start off with is talking about performances of power. And this is something that Weston Zimmerman um, speak a little bit about when they're talking about how do we achieve participation and legitimacy within a social status group related to our gender. Um, and they're thinking really about how power and how gender are performed through our everyday interactions with others, as well as things like our dress, our body language, our manner of speaking, um, all of those different social markers and cues that we use to highlight the ways in which we are gendered and where our social power, where we sit in the hierarchy of social power based on those performances of gender. So service in the military really serves as a means, and Leslie Gill and Jess Goodell both touch on this, service in the military serves as a means for claiming status of social power, especially for men marginalized by race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic class. And we know from different the readings that we've had this week that marg men who are marginalized by socioeconomic class and race and ethnicity are really disproportionately targeted for recruitment in the military. Um, and one of the reasons that this is such a useful and uh, successful vehicle for gaining social legitimacy, um, we can draw from Connell and Pasco in their discussions of how masculinity is hierarchical, that marginalized masculinity is subordinate to this valorized um, masculinity that's really conflated tightly with aggression and dominance. So uh, moving just through that concept, um, I'd like you to think really critically from Connell and Pasco's readings and how those apply to the readings that we've had this week around masculinity in the military. So men marginalized through these systems must gain social legitimacy through some form of um, public performance that highlights their different forms of legitimacy within society. They're marginalized by their race and class, perhaps, but by adopting forms of masculinity and aggression, or masculinity that conflate aggression and dominance, they're able to claim social power and participation in a more elite form of masculinity. So we're moving on now to think uh, just a little bit more critically about the ways in which men are marginalized um, and, and how that marginalization makes them easy targets, perhaps that's a loaded um, term, makes military service perhaps more um, appealing as a as a career or as a um, as an advocation at the beginning of your life in public. Um, so Gill and Goodell both point out that the men targeted for military service are often coming from the most powerless sectors of society, whether that's because they're socioeconomically marginalized or they're coming from an ethnicity that has historically been subjugated in the context of their society. And these men can achieve 
status as men with social capital through performances of dominance and aggression. And Gill goes into um, why that's such a tightly conflated bundle between masculinity and dominance and aggression. She talks a lot about the ways in which society in Bolivia valorizes the idea of strength and dominance, courage and leadership, and that those are markers of performing masculinity in the quote, right way. Um, and so we can also see that the army, at least in the US and in the UK, is used as a vehicle not just for performing masculinity, but for gaining a leg up um, in your career. So here we've got a recruitment ad for the British Army. It says, in the Army Reserve, you can experience a different career in your spare time. Search Army jobs. It's not just that you're going to go um, be Rambo off in your Army training and in your Army service, it's going to be a leg up so that when you come out of the army, you'll no longer be in these marginalized social classes. You will have gained a stepping stone into the world of elite um, socioeconomic class and uh, status groups. So we're able to claim manhood through participation in the military. And Gill says this is a signifier of rights to power. Through the experience of military service, men are able to assert a dignified sense of masculinity. This serves as a counterpoint to their degradation experienced for more dominant males in the economic system that assigns them to the least desirable occupations. So here we need to think again about Connell and Pascoe's discussion of marginalized masculinity and the ways in which masculinity is hierarchical and really intertwined with race, class, and gender. Um, and here we have a picture of Vladimir Putin, again, um, now once again the president of the Russian Federation. He's here with a really, really young soldier. Um, this is a way, I, I think this image really instills the sense that power and prestige is being transferred onto those men who are willing to step forward and engage in military service. So it's not just a means of performing masculinity in the right way, it's also a means of stepping into a more uh, desirable social standing um, within your country by joining this um, elite group of men that have leadership and courage and are really valorized within the eyes of their society. And this kind of idea of a pride of a nation gives the sense that men who go into military service are able to claim social legitimacy, not just because they're performing masculinity the right way, but because now society is going to valorize their commitment and their service. Um, so the socially marginalized men who are sent to stand in harm's way for their countries, oftentimes to die in armed conflicts, those men are the same groups that lack access to social power that would enable them to effectively question the reasons why their country has engaged in conflict. So the, the men making decisions as to who's going to go engage in conflict and what conflicts they will be participating in are different from the men who are actually going to stand on the front lines. Um, and that often leads to, as we know from all of the armed conflicts that we've had, at least in the 20th century and 21st century now, that that results in a disproportionate sacrifice and, and death count of men who are coming from lower um, socioeconomic classes and marginalized racial groups. So this, as I said, is a way for the country, or at least our country and other societies, Leslie Gill talks a lot about how this, uh, how this plays out in Bolivia, where societies valorize the men who are sent to die for their country. And this provides a way for social elite to pay homage to these men's sacrifices without having to answer for the reasons why they're actually sending men to die in armed conflicts. Because the men who are going and standing on the front lines don't have access to those forms of power that would make it possible for them to really challenge and question the reasons why they're going to go engage in an armed conflict. So just to recap what we've talked about today, the points that I wanted to draw out, that men targeted for recruitment and participation in the military are often coming from marginalized status groups who lack social power. They're 
enticement for gaining or for entering the military is often because in military service these men can embody socially celebrated forms of masculinity such as leadership courage dominance and aggression that gives them the means for achieving legitimacy as embodying masculinity in the right way and that society's valorization of this service glosses over opportunities to challenge the underlying reasons why a society would choose to engage in an armed conflict so thank you for sticking with me today as we talk through some of the main points of the readings related to masculinity and aggression and i look forward to reading your responses on the discussion board thank you